is now my pleasure to recognize the ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Collins, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Acting Attorney General, for being here. But I would like to thank, I'll start off with this way, and I also want to thank the Chairman for a show of honesty. We now have the reason for this hearing. It has nothing to do with the oversight of DOJ. It has everything to do, as we found out this morning in a document dump, from the Democratic side of this committee and also another committee, that this is nothing more than a character assassination. And we're going to also decide to see if we can just do something and get at the president while we're had the chance. Yesterday, I want to tell you a story. I used to, I, my kids are now grown. They're 26 and down to 20. And I used to always love the, the Easter season and the time of, of especially hide and seek and, and going to find you know, eggs. And, and that look on their face when they uh, found that, uh, that last egg they were looking for. And that just that look of surprise. And yesterday was that for me again. I was back being a father again because yesterday was nothing but pure political theater. It was wonderful. It was a time for hide and seek. The chairman had a hearing. Let's do a subpoena. We're going to stand tough. And let's just do the timeline real quick. We get through with it. And as I had warned this committee, a preemptive subpoena was not a good idea. It chills all other witnesses coming before this committee and would probably have a detrimental effect to the acting attorney general. But, hey, I'm the minority. Who cares? So we do it. And the acting attorney general's office responded. At about 5 o'clock, the chairman sent a letter saying, we know we'll examine it on a case-by-case -case basis. The acting attorney general said, no, we need assurances that you're not going to issue a subpoena today or yesterday or today. So, okay, we're back and forth. DOJ, as, as I understand, he said, no, that's not enough assurance. And, uh, and we were informed around uh, a certain time last night, about 7 o'clock last night, that an agreement had been made and it was a full cave by the committee chairman. No subpoenas today. So everything that we did earlier in the day was a complete waste of time. Now, what was even worse about this, and let's talk about you know, Twitter accounts. Last night around 8 o'clock, the chairman's Twitter account said acting attorney general was going to show up today at 9.30. The interesting thing about that is, is they linked to the 5 o'clock letter, not this letter, which I ask now to be admitted to the record, which, by the way, I was CC'd on, but never, you know, I guess this is it. But we're going to put this into the record now the letter to the acting attorney general in which the uh, chairman of this committee says there will be no subpoena tomorrow and any differences we have we'll work on later. And I ask you now, Mr. Kent, that be entered into the record. That objection? So at 8 o'clock, we decided to send out a tweet to the world, which many in the media, by the way, picked up on and have run stories today saying the reason the uh, judiciary chairman wins, the attorney general's coming, he doesn't have assurances. No, he does, right here. There's going to be no subpoena today. So when we talk about transparency, which was so evident yesterday, now we get to the real meat of the issue. It is also amazing to me, as I said yesterday, when you come here and you put an issue of this hearing, yes, on Thursday, Bill Barr was approved out of the Senate Judiciary Committee. By next Thursday, he will be the Attorney General. This gentleman right here is finishing up the last term of acting attorney general. He's willingly, was willing to come, but yet we had the charade yesterday. This hearing is pointless, and basically it was made even more pointless by the chairman's opening statement. This is not about what the, the good men and women at the Department of Justice are doing. This is not about FBI agents are doing their job. It could be about the FBI agents that we on our side have talked about that didn't do their job, and we'll probably hear a lot about that today. There's plenty of frustration of issues of DOJ oversight. But, sir, I'm not sure, frankly, that the oversight of your financial situation from 2014, from 2014 to 2016 has anything to do with this hearing. It's beyond the scope of this hearing. So if this is what we're going to do, if this is where we're going, then I want to remind everyone that this is not the Senate. If my friends on the other side of the aisle of this committee wanted to do a confirmation hearing, they just ought to set it up front. And if they want to do a confirmation hearing on senators, run for Senate. This is not a confirmation hearing. This is a Department of Justice oversight hearing, supposedly, oops, oops, I'm sorry, 
Back to theatrics again. The curtain opened up and we found out what was really going on. No, we want to damage the president. We want to talk about your private conversations. We want to talk about what you did and why the president, a most amazing quote I just heard a moment ago. We want to know why the president may have put you there for what he got. That's offensive. When we look at this and we go through this, Mr. Whitaker, there are a lot of issues that We've discussed personally, and as, also, as far as knowing this and discussing things that we could do at Oversight, that frankly, on our side, we're frustrated with. And that's going to come out today. But for the chairman to do what we did yesterday, to have this hide-and-seek game, to play it all along, and then to willingly mislead the press and everybody else to think you're coming here today because of a partial assurance, not a full-blown cave, which is exactly what happened in his letter, is a travesty not only to this committee, but to the people watching and the reporters who thought it was real. When we look forward into this hearing today, it's time on this one, if this is the way we're gonna go, then we'll have plenty of stunts. We're gonna have plenty of theatrics. Bring your popcorn. I'm thinking about maybe we just set up a popcorn machine in the back because that's what this is becoming. It's becoming a show. When your presence was here, you were coming voluntarily. You've always said you're coming voluntarily. So we had the show yesterday. We now have had the curtain drop down, and Mr. Whitaker, you're, I guess your confirmation hearing's here. You only got five days left on the job or six days left on the job. We could join together with the chairman and say, Mr. Barr, come in here, because you've been actually the attorney general. Mr. Barr has been the attorney general. He's been before this committee before. We could have had substantive hearings, but no, we're going to have a show. Dog and pony show. Let's get it out. This is the most amazing thing when I, you know, but I go back to something. Sometimes as a father, I started this as a father, I'm going to end it as a father. I give my kids advice and they look at me like, Dad, I love you. But then they give me that sort of dog look. I don't believe you. You know the sad part about this is? We predicted it all yesterday. We knew what was coming. The sad part about it is, is the chairman chose to play hide and seek. He chose to cave at the end, and by the way, still not have open and transparency. I'm glad we did. Glad we got it now. But this is no way to run the railroad, and it's definitely no way to run one of the most prestigious committees in this house. And this is something that everyone should be concerned about. There's enough at DOJ for us to do oversight on. But Mr. Whitaker, this is your life. It's like the old TV show. They just want a piece of you. And with that, Mr. Chairman, pursuant to Clause 4, Rule 16I, I do now move to adjourn. Motion Mr. Chairman, a motion to adjourn has been made. Motions to adjourn are not debatable. All in favor of the motion to adjourn say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. No. The noes have it. Roll call. Roll call has been requested. That, where's the clerk? The clerk will, if the clerk is here, she will call the roll. <laughs> We'll wait a moment for the clerk. No, we'll help the clerk. Oh, where is the clerk? The clerk's better. They're coming. <clears throat> Mr. Chair. No, the, the roll call is in progress. The clerk is prepared. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Chairman. Uh, motion to no. Mr. Chairman votes no. Ms. Lofgren. Ms. Lofgren votes no. Ms. Jackson Lee. Ms. Jackson Lee votes no. Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson votes no. Mr. Deutsch. Mr. Deutsch votes no. Ms. Bass. Ms. Bass votes no. Mr. Richmond. No. Mr. Richmond votes no. Mr. Jeffries. No. Mr. Jeffries votes no. Mr. Cicilline. So we may continue to pursue the truth, I vote no. Mr. Cicilline votes no. Mr. Swalwell. No. Mr. Swalwell votes no. Mr. Liu. No. Mr. Liu votes no. Mr. Raskin. No. Mr. Raskin votes no. Ms. Jayapal. No. Ms. Jayapal votes no. Ms. Demings. 
Ms. Demings votes no. Mr. Correa? No. Mr. Correa votes no. Ms. Scanlon? No. Ms. Scanlon votes no. Ms. Garcia? No. Ms. Garcia votes no. Mr. Nagus? No. Mr. Nagus votes no. Ms. McBath? No. Ms. McBath votes no. Mr. Staunton? No. Mr. Staunton votes no. Ms. Dean? No. Ms. Dean votes no. Ms. Mercasel Powell? No. Ms. Mercasel Powell votes no. Ms. Escobar? No. Ms. Escobar votes no. Mr. Collins? Mr. Collins votes yes. Mr. Sensenbrenner? Mr. Chabot? Mr. Chabot votes aye. Mr. Gomert? Mr. Gomert votes aye. Mr. Jordan? Mr. Jordan votes yes. Mr. Buck? Mr. Ratcliffe? Ms. Roby? Mr. Gates? Mr. Johnson? Mr. Biggs? Mr. Biggs votes aye. Mr. McClintock? Mr. McClintock votes aye. Ms. Lesko? Ms. Lesko votes aye. Mr. Rentschbuller? Mr. Klein? Mr. Klein votes aye. Ms. Armstrong? Ms. Armstrong votes aye. Mr. Stubbe. Okay. Are there any other members wishing to vote? I haven't voted. Gentleman from Texas? Yes. Are there any other members who wish to vote who haven't voted? Mr. Ratcliffe votes aye. Yep. Clerical report. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, there are 24 no's and 10 ayes. The motion to, dis to adjourn is uh, not approved. I will now introduce today's witness. Matthew G. Whitaker is the Acting Attorney General of the United States. Previously, Mr. Whitaker served as Chief of Staff to Attorney General Jeff Sessions. He was appointed as the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Iowa on June 15, 2004, by President George W. Bush. Before that, he was a managing partner of the Des Moines-based law firm Whitaker, Hagenau, and Gustav, LLP. He was also the Executive Director for Fact.